Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning, our text is taken from the book of Philippians. I call it a book. It's really a letter. We tend to look at it as a, as a book because it's between two covers. But really, it's a, it's a letter that was written to a church that the Apostle Paul deeply loved. One of the most uplifting books in all of the Bible. And I'm going to be reading from Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 14. And this is what... What it says, even though I too have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. And whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus as my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the re resurrection from the dead. Not that I've already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on. Toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Pray with me. Lord, this day, give us strength we don't have, strength enough to press on. To press on. Use this time called worship to do that. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. In one of his books, Charles Allen tells a story about two fellows who bumped into each other on a busy city sidewalk. Well, they hadn't seen each other in years. And they started up the conversation and soon moved the conversation from the sidewalk into a nearby coffee shop. That's when one of the fellows looked down at his watch and said, oh, I missed my bus. The other one looked down and said, oh, I missed my train. Well, they discovered that they, they worked pretty close to each other there. So they said, well, tomorrow for lunch, why don't we meet for lunch? And we can continue to catch up. Well, the next day they met for lunch, and one of the fellows said, what did your wife have to say about you being so late last night? He said, oh, all I could do was apologize. He said, I, I told her that I bumped into you and that uh, we were catching up. I lost track of time, and I just said, I, I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? And she did. What about you? The fellow said, well, my wife got historical. He said, historical? You mean hysterical? He said, no, I mean historical. She brought up things I did 20 years ago. 
<laughs> well, I don't know if you know anybody who has a tendency to get historical, but it's the tendency that all of us have to look back to the past and say, well, that's the way the future is going to be. To look back to the past and, 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 and go forward on the past. We have a tendency to get historical. And that's what Paul is dealing with right here. The church in Philippi. That Paul can't be with them. And so there's all kind of confusion going on there. Paul is in prison for the cause of Christ. And so there's some people that are rising up that don't have anything to do with the church, don't have anything to do with Christ, don't have anything to do with Paul. They just want to, they're rising up for power. They are pointing to their trophy case. They're pointing to their resume. They're pointing to their past accomplishments. They're getting historical, and they're standing up and saying, follow me. You can tell the kind of leader I am from what I've done in the past. And they're puffing themselves up real big. And the people in the church are saying, well, yeah, they, you know, they do have quite a trophy case, but Paul, help us out here. And Paul, from prison, reaches out to these folks. And he writes them this letter. And Paul says, if, if they want to point to their trophy case, nobody has a bigger trophy case than I do. We read it this morning. He says, as to his heritage, he can trace it all the way back before Moses. He was from the tribe of Benjamin, only one of two tribes that backed up David. And as to the section of his tribe, he was a Pharisee. These weren't folks who just did their best to follow the Ten Commandments and see how... No, they followed 613 commandments. And Paul goes on to say, as, as for his ability to follow those commandments, he was blameless. In other words, he didn't just score a 90 on most of the... He scored 100 all of the time. Blameless. Perfect. He said, anybody wants to point to their trophy case, I have more reason than anybody else. But a trophy case doesn't make up the church. That the focus, the foundation, the center is Jesus Christ. So press on, press on, press on. You can do it. And he tries to give them joy, encouragement, peace, and telling them to, to press on. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Press on. And the first thing that Paul tells them to do is to press on in, in personal faith, faith. Verse 8, this is what it says. Paul is talking to them and he says, Because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. And again in verse 10 he says, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. He doesn't point to the trophy case. He doesn't point to his past accomplishment. He doesn't point to his resume. He points to Jesus Christ, and, and that's the center. That's where we get our power. That's where we get our strength. That Christ Jesus is the substance of faith, not our accomplishments. James Moore tells a story about being asked to do an invocation at a rodeo. He was there behind the, the bandstand waiting for them to call him up so he could give them vacation for the rodeo. And that's where he, he overheard two cowboys talking to each other. They were getting ready for the bull riding co uh, event. And they were going over the two tough guys. They were, they were going over all their injuries that they'd had riding bull, broken bones, broken ribs, sprained ankles, sprained back. And then... A fellow walked by. Well, it was a fellow that he wore brand new cowboy boots, had fresh pressed Levi's. He was wearing a rodeo shirt that was just, just beautiful. And he had a, a big hat that he was wearing, big belt buckle on his belt. But by the way, he was walking past him, and it was obvious he probably had never been on a horse in his life. Two cowboys stopped talking to each other, and they nodded to him. And when he passed by, one turned to the other and said, All hat and no cattle. <laughs> well, it's a familiar saying for a lot of folks, all hat and no cattle. Other people put it a different way. They say, all, all icing and no cake. 
or no sizzling, all sizzling, no steak, that it lacks the substance. It lacks what counts. It lacks, it lacks its, its reason for being. And Paul says, if you want to point to your trophy case, that is not your reason for being. That it's personal faith to rely on, to lean on, to trust Jesus Christ. He goes on to say, and, and the, the power of his resurrection. That in the Christian life, there's not just a label that we wear, not just a hat, but there's power. Power. The power of a changed life. Not a trophy case, not a resume, not accomplishments, but power. A power that brings joy. A power that brings peace. Not just because of our circumstances. This is Paul who's in prison, who's trying to, who's trying to bring joy and peace to the folks who are free. It's not his circumstances. It's not his accomplishments. It's the power of the risen Christ that he's trying to convey to them and trying to urge them on in that relationship with the risen Christ that his Holy Spirit might have power, power in their lives. So he's urging them, press on, press on. But not only press on in personal faith, he urges them to press on and remember who they are. Verse 12, this is what he says. He says, I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Christ Jesus has made me his own. That we belong to Christ. The, we are his own. The way the, the Old Testament put it, we are his own possession. This is where Paul got it from Deuteronomy also from Isaiah, and also from the Psalms. It's again and again and again in the, in the New Testament that we'll know who we are, that we'll know our identity, that we'll know our identity. Several years ago, I was awakened in the middle of the night by a phone call. I answered the phone, and it was my credit card company. They wanted to know if I was in Bulgaria, because they had gotten a suspicious charge at a lingerie store in Bulgaria. <laughs> well, I assured them that, no, I was in Georgia asleep in my bed, and that I wasn't at a lingerie store in Bulgaria. Well, I was thankful that they disqualified the charge, but my identity, my identity had been compromised. And the thought of having my identity compromised by someone that I didn't even know, well, I didn't sleep for the rest of the night, as you might imagine. My identity was compromised. So much of today, we live by identity. We live in a world that tries to tell us who we are. And they try and tell us who, who we are, either by who we vote for, or what, what cause we stand for, or what cause we stand against, or what toothpaste we buy, or our age, our race, our sex, our national origin. The, 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 so folks are trying to, 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 to project on us identity. Folks we don't even know are trying to project onto us our identity. Paul is saying, press on and remember who you are. You are Jesus' own possession. That you belong to him. That the way Galatians puts it, you've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer we who live, but Christ lives in us. And the life we now live in the flesh, we live by faith faith in the Son of God who loved us and, and delivered himself up for us. Pastor Don Tuttle talks about this when he, he talks about a play that he read 
There's a play about a fellow named Sam. And Sam, in this play, ran into Jesus on the road. And it was there that Jesus asked Sam to, to take up his cross, deny himself, and, and follow him. Well, Sam was reluctant, but he agreed. So Jesus gave Sam his cross in this play. Well, he didn't give him a pocket cross, a, a cross that he could hide. Didn't even give him a, a gold cross that he could put under his shirt. No, he gave him a, a life-size cross to carry around with him. Well, in the play, Sam carried the cross to work with him. And after a while, his boss began to complain that Sam wasn't making the same sales numbers that he was making before. That Sam, because he carried the cross with him, realized that in his work he couldn't cut any corners. That he couldn't take advantage of customers the way that he had before. That Sam took with him the cross on a date. His girlfriend complained she found the cross just plain old embarrassing. That why couldn't he just be like everyone else? Later on, he carried the cross with him with his friends. And he found that what they called fun, which Sam had called fun before, had more to do with making fun of others and demeaning other people. And what Sam discovered was what was lost were his old trophies. The things that he, he thought he enjoyed, what he lost was his old resume. What he lost was his old accomplishments. But what he gained instead was life. Life. A life. Because we remember that we are Jesus' own possession. That we belong to him. And when we think we belong to the, to the trophy case, when we think we belong to the resume, when we think we belong to our accomplishments, well, really, we're enslaved. We're shackled to an identity that has nothing to do with the way you and I were made. That you and I were made in God's image. And when God said, let us make man in our image, we are made as an us and an our. Made to be in relationship with him. Made to be in relationship with neighbor. Not an us and a them. The world would call us to an identity of us and them. Who are you against? Where do you stand? What are you for? Our identity is in Christ. And he gives us power, the risen Christ gives us power to press on. To press on. Press on and remember who you are. Christ's own possession. Press on in personal faith. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is press on. Press on and forget who you're not. Verse 13, this is what Paul says. He says, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straying forward to what lies ahead. This one thing I do, I forget what, what lies behind and strain forward, press on to what lies ahead. Forget, forget who you're not. Who would have thought that forgetting was a big part of what it is to be a follower of Christ? But Paul Paul, when he's, he's listing off what first seems like all accomplishments, that he's a, 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 a member of the, of, of the people of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to righteousness under the law, blameless, he includes one thing in there that, well, it's nothing to be proud of at all. One thing he lists in there is that he's a persecutor of the church. Doesn't mean he just used harsh language. What he used was imprisonment and beating. It was Paul who stood tending the cloaks of those who killed Stephen. He was an accessory to murder. That's what's in his trophy case. 
Well, he could look at it as zeal, or he could look at it as something to be ashamed of, or he could look at it the way Jesus Christ does, a sin that's forgiven, cast as far as the east is from the west, tossed away. The Apostle Paul isn't talking about a power of Christ that just paints the world as sunshine and lollipops, and all we have to do is keep looking at the sunny side. No, he talks about a life, a life that's, that's full of trophies. Some of them are good and some are downright shameful. And he reminds you and me, that's who we are not. We're not our greatest accomplishment and we're not our greatest defeat. He reminds us of who we're not. We're not our, our best day and we're not our worst day. Who we are is Christ's own possession. And so it's time to put down the failure, put down the shame, to stop practicing, to stop rehearsing, to start going over it again and again and again. I read a story, talks about Robert E. Lee, that after... A, the Civil War, he went around to a war-torn South. People who were broken. And tells a story about a woman who had lost her husband in the war. And she was so full of bitterness. All she could talk was about was the Union and what they had done to her family and to her farm. She pointed to a grove of trees, and she said the Union soldiers used those trees as target practice. They'd been here since before the Revolutionary War. They carved their names in them and used them as target practice. What should I do? And Robert E. Lee said you should cut them down and forget about it. What has Jesus done for you and for me? He took that trophy case. He took that resume, he took those accomplishments, and he tossed them as far as the east is from the west, that we might lean on him and not the trophies. That we might lean on him rather than rehearse the shame, practice the defeat, and remember the sin. Christ died for sin once for all, the just for the unjust, in order that He might bring us to God. That He might bring us to God. It's the power of the risen Christ that brings you and me to God. This morning, it may be that you're living a, at a time and a place in your life that you've been doing anything and everything but living a life toward God. Maybe you've gotten into that place where you've been practicing, rehearsing, going over again and again and again your worst defeat. And you've been thinking that, that you're no more than, a, than your, your worst day, than your worst defeat. Jesus has more for you than that. Or it may be that instead of that, you've been trying to, to hang your identity on, on your greatest accomplishment, saying that's really who you are. And if you've tried it, you know that it's a life of emptiness. And then there's no life in it at all. Or this morning, this morning it, it may be that you've tried to live by everything but a personal faith. It might be the faith that belonged to your mom or your dad. Or maybe an aunt or an uncle or a friend. But you've never invited Jesus to make his home in, in your heart. This morning I want to invite you. Invite you to, to press on. Press on. And invite Jesus, the risen Christ begin to live his life through you, not one day, but this day. And I want to pray with you this morning. Let's pray. Jesus, your strength 
It's what, well, it's what we need for life. The power of the risen Christ living in us. We've been living in a world that tells us that our power is, is not in you. That it's in our abilities. That it's in our trophies. It's in our resume. This morning we're at that place where we're empty. That we've known everything but joy and peace. This day, Lord, grant us grace enough, strength enough that we receive your Holy Spirit to live in us once and for all, starting this day. And we know that our identity is not in our greatest accomplishment and it's not in our, our greatest failure, that it's in you. And that you give us the strength we don't have to, to walk, to walk in you, in your strength. Not one day, but this day. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image, and what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our, when God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir, an organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.